Um, I think you wanted to say a word. And, uh, I would like to make a quick announcement. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank just, you, uh, just for uh, uh, members of uh, members of the authority and for the public. Uh, Authority members, you'll, you'll, uh, you would have noticed over the past few months that we've sort of had wires and cables running everywhere through, uh, through the boardroom while, so that we could live stream the meetings. Uh, uh, our, uh, uh, the city's communications team, and I think Julie is here today. Julie Hill, the director of communications, is here today. Her team uh, worked through the weekend. As you can see, there are new cameras that are actually hanging from the ceiling in the back and then two here on the sides and one at the front there as well as a microphone in the ceiling. And so, uh, so this is our first meeting where all of the new technology is in. The control room is set up in what was a closet for us across the hallway. And so, so going forward, we'll be, we'll be live streaming uh, and uh, in a little more professional capacity. And they have a youth filter, so don't worry. The four people are sitting over there in the room. So thank, we thank them and we thank our police officers too. Does anyone have anything to say? We have three minutes for anyone who has a comment. Thank you. Okay, can I have uh, approval of the minutes, please, for December 17th? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Review of the financial position. Good morning, everyone. You have your tablets active in front of you. I'll be going over the financial inflows and outflows for the authority for the month of December. As always, we'll have our PowerPoint up here for the items I'll be covering, in addition to your detailed sheets you have on your tablets in front of you. For the month of December, start with our operating account activity. We begin the month with $4.7 million cash on hand. For the receipts we had for the operating account, $37,000 coming in from investor revenue bonds. Uh, there's two different bond recipients we received those fees for. Below that, we have a reimbursement that we pulled from the city's uh, capital improvement or construction improvement program uh, related to the amphitheater, which is an outflow. Uh, I'll go over shortly. That's the incoming cash from the city there. As well as our interest income over $3,000. <coughs> From the monthly interest we earn on our savings and CDs maintains. For disbursements, a large amount of activity in December. We have our recurring utility bills for the vacant property over at 110 South and Fence Boulevard, formerly the Priority Building. Just about $2,000 being expended for that. And then we have the outflow of the amphitheater funding. In this case, the money was used for a grease trap replacement over there. So that's the corresponding outflow that we pulled down from the city. So operating account activity at the end of the month, $4,767,000 cash on hand. Can you answer any questions you may have on the operating account? Uh, I'll move to the incentive program in this month of December. $4.6 million of cash on hand. For our receipts, we had a drawdown of the appropriations. The city receives the tax revenue the cash is needed. There's a half million dollars of cash moving from the city to the authority. Uh, additional cash receipts, we had our interest income just over $1,100 with cash or interest being earned on the checking account the authority maintains. For our disbursements, a few incentive awards we had paid out. You'll see uh, a payment to BMZ USA as well as global technical systems, both for capital investment, those companies made within the city, uh, both of being partial payments on the overall awards there. Skipping down for our, to our dome site or our Lincoln Park project, we have legal fees related to Singer Davis for some legal consulting they've been providing to the city attorney's office, uh, just under $35,000 related to those fees. And then also from our bio initiative, you'll see our reoccurring monthly rent we're paying for the accelerator space, just under $10,000 in this case for the January rent for which the accelerator. So cash at the end of the month, just over $4.9 million cash on hand. And I'll take that money over, that funding over to our reconciliation available incentive funding going forward. You've adjusted your receivables and your commitments, all for any awards that were paid out, as well as anything that was approved at last month's meeting. We're looking at our estimation at the end of the year, $2,920,350. Uh, 
happy to answer any questions anyone has on the incentive program. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much. And I, our wonderful director is going to tell us all the good news. Thank you, Madam Chair, and it, and it is good <coughs> news. And so uh, a couple of things we're going to show you. The reason we're bringing you some of this day today is, is we, it is time for us to do our biannual, update our biannual profile as well as we owe you a, a, uh, a performance report for, uh, for uh, 2018 and 2019. So, so here is uh, uh, some new information that we're showing you. Traditionally, we focused on our EDIP program. But really, what we want to talk about here today is our broader economy, and here's, here's why that makes sense. Not every business we deal with uh, is going to apply for or even need an EDIP, uh, but the activities, that, the activities of the authority, the activities of city council, along with the way that we tactically manage those activities at the staff level, really create a broader business climate that, uh, that allows us to grow and be successful. And so we want to show you very exciting numbers that we've been able to isolate over the last few months. First one, our economy. This is coming out of Smart Asset. Smart Asset is a, uh, it's a New York-based uh, sort of investment house, but they are frequently say, uh, cited by Fortune Magazine, the Wall Street Journal, so on and so forth. They're, they're a reputable source that the city has used for a while. So here's what's great. Our GD, our, uh, we have uh, a GDP growth index of 3.06%. What does that equate to in dollars? $1.01 billion invested in our community last year. That's all been verified. A very exciting trend for us. Uh, what, is, uh, and, uh, what does that mean? Well, that 3.06% is second in the Commonwealth, or second to Fairfax County, and we'll show you what that means in just a minute. And, uh, and we were just recently able to dig in a little deeper. It's 100, uh, across the United States, that's a, of all cities, local governments in the United States, we're in the top 200. I would tell you that is a powerful statistic for us. So to be second in the Commonwealth in net GDP uh, growth as well as uh, uh, in the top 200 in the U.S., I mean, that's indicative of, of a powerful year for the city of Virginia Beach. Um, we had business growth over the period of 3.5%. And... Um, 400, now this is from a different source, 493 business startups. Where, what's the data source on that? Data source on that is the Virginia Employment Commission. So again, we would tell you a reputable source of data. But uh, exciting for us to be able to report to you that, okay, uh, just looking at our economy, at the second highest growth in the Commonwealth, uh, business growth of 3.5%, almost 500 new businesses decided to open in our community last year. Incredibly great year for local business. What does that mean? Just to show you, this is this is a quick look at the top ten around the Commonwealth. So Fairfax, um, well, no secret, uh, Fairfax continues to be a juggernaut in the Commonwealth, and we we uh, commend them for their success. One thing I do want you to, to notice, though, if you look at the federal funding per capita at forty three thousand per head versus ours at just more than seven thousand, I would tell you. Um, we're not really comparing apples and apples when we look at their data and ours. But if you look, you can see right on down, uh, we were we were ahead of both Loudon, uh, we were ahead of Loudon and Rico, Prince William, Chesterfield, Arlington, Richmond, and then two of our neighbors in Chesapeake and Norfolk. Looking at employment statistics within the, within the, uh, the community, we had a, a citywide unemployment rate of 2.4 percent. And I'm going to show you some detailed data on this in just a second. But again, this represents greater than full employment by any by any measurable statistic that you will ever find. So 2.4% so unemployment is really, a, really an outstanding number for our community, though I'm going to show you some challenges that it creates for, you, for us in just a moment. Uh, we added 5,000 jobs to the economy last year. Again, a great statistic for the city of Virginia Beach. Something else, I hear a lot um, about net migration out of the region. Important to know the Virginia Beach labor force increased by 4,200 give or take, last year. That's also from the Employment Commission. So again, net, net migration may be a regional issue, it's not a local issue. We had, our labor force actually increased by more than 4,000 laborers last year. So again, a very exciting statistic for us. Especially if we could, before I move on, if you could swap over to that PDF real quick. I want to, um, I tried to load this one into the PowerPoint, it's just beyond my technical capability. It, didn't, uh, it just didn't work well. <laughs> but if we could, if you could, scroll up just a little. And so up, just the, just the chart for me there, if you could. So here's what you can see. 
This is a look from November of 2018 to November of 2019. There, uh, there are three lines here. The blue line at the top is the U.S. The, uh, the red line is the Commonwealth of Virginia. The green line is us. So what I want to show you is not only are we consistently performing better than the U.S. average, we started, this is, if you were to break in on that, that would be 2.7%, give or take, uh, or 2.5 here, excuse me, in, uh, in November of 18. And if you work through, you see there's a point where we diverge from the Commonwealth and, and we finish the year sitting just better than the Commonwealth of Virginia. Um, as you all know, Virginia's designated number one place to do business in the country last year, and you can see why here with these historically low unemployment rates. But, that's, but it's important to know uh, we can, we're leading the Commonwealth here as well. Okay, let's scroll down to the next slide. But I want to show you a couple of, come on all the way down, right there. Uh, can you make it a little larger? Can we blow, uh, go here and blow that up to 175 if you would. It's got a beautiful screen. Thank you. Okay. So this is the number I want you to see here. It's going to be important when we talk about strategy moving forward in just a moment. Our manufacturing new hires by industry lag. If you can scroll down here, you'll see also a big one. Come on down, right here. Also, this is something I want to talk about in a moment. You can see new hires of almost 11,000 employees in accommodation and food service, which speaks to a, a real challenge in sort of in our market from a capacity standpoint. Let's scroll down to the next slide. All right, stop here. This is turnover by industry. So if you can see, we're seeing below 6% in most. Construction's a little higher, but if you would, let's scroll down here to right here. 15.5% in accommodation and, uh, and, uh, and food service. And uh, it's not that we can jump back over to the main presentation now, but I want to talk about those two numbers for just a minute because um, what, you'll, what that's telling us is we're seeing, uh, if you were to scroll down, you would see the weight weekly earnings in manufacturing about $1,000 per week, whereas in the food service um, across the entire market, they're about $361 per week. And so the problem that, that creates is what we are seeing is we're seeing incredibly high turnover. If you're seeing turnover above 15% in one sector in, in, spe in specific, uh, it tells us that we don't have, or in particular in this case, it tells us that we don't have adequate supply of labor in that space. Um, and with that amount of turnover, what, what that probably means is, is people are jumping ship and going to other places for... 25 cents an hour, 50 cents an hour, something like that. I mean, they, there are people at the table that have more experience in this in, in that industry than I do. Uh, than I do. However, uh, they're probably feeling that, I would guess. But the reality is the market, the data is showing us that we're seeing <coughs> incredibly high turnover at the bottom and we're not creating enough opportunity at the top. And so, uh, and so one of the things you'll hear us focus about on in just uh, moving forward will be the, uh, will be specifically recruiting, manufacturing, cyber, things like that are core sectors. I want to talk quickly about um, community investment. Uh, this is a different look at EDIP. This is not the number of EDIPs that we awarded. This is, per, this is the amount of money we paid out for EDIPs during the last year. So we made payments to 18 companies in, uh, in 2019. Those payments totaled $937,000, but it's important to note those payments generated $49 million in verified capital investment, uh, 42 new jobs, and the retention of 18 firm jobs. This is the impact piece that we've not historically done a good enough job of telling you. So we've, we talk about our announcements all the time. This is what we accomplished. Your investment of $937,000 in, uh, in 2019 generated a private to public investment ratio of 49 to 1 in our community. Now this is not, this is not something that, that we're making up. Sean, wherever he is, uh, uh, did a great job of pulling this data together for me. He and I did, did several cuts of it to break into to what we saw there specifically. And what we can tell you is these are real numbers. There's an invoice or a receipt that supports uh, all 49 million of that in our house today. And so uh, a very powerful number for us and clear evidence of the, uh, of, uh, of the impact of the programs that we run here. Um, that's really all I have for this presentation. Are there, any, are there any questions? We are very proud of what you've done, and thank you so much. <clears throat> so I appreciate there's a lot of good data there. But when you peel back and look underneath the data, where do you see the opportunities for improvement? Great question. Spell, if we could jump over to that website. Um, so, 
where we are, we're a clear leader in GDP growth. Phil, if you could jump over to this incoming, eco incoming investment slide. We are lagging as it relates to new capital coming into our market. If you would, put the cursor right here for me. That's, that's us. There we go. And you can see we're 33rd in the state, the state and outside the top 500 in incoming investment to Virginia Beach. And so what's, what is that telling us? Well, what that's telling us that, that we're not going, one of two things has happened. It tells us that we, we are not having the impact that we would like in going out of our market and bringing businesses into our market. And so, uh, for example, if you look at Suffolk here, come right on it right there. I mean, they're, they're 14th. Suffolk had a couple of nights. Has had a, has landed a couple of nice sort of national deals through their site ready through the, through the sites that they've advanced and what they've seen is uh, significant per capita investment coming in coming into their uh, into their community. Um, I would tell you for us this is why you you hear us talk about refocusing our work um, international and domestic portfolios <coughs> and focusing on our seven core uh, criteria because really what the data shows us is that we've done a good job of working with our partners in tourism and working with, um, with local businesses that want to continue to reinvest in our community. But I think what we're not seeing is out-of-market capital coming in. Another, uh, another thing that that could mean, and we know that there, that there are two actually, um, local businesses that have reached the point where they're expanding out of market and are going to start selling franchises, uh, basically becoming a capital importer. That also is an activity that we see uh, being very ben beneficial to us growing, going forward because it creates that same factor. It means that it means that Virginia Beach businesses are growing, expanding out of market, bringing. Back. <coughs> so I mean, I would tell you if there's one place where we really need to focus over the next, you know, 18 to 24 months, it's there. It's in bringing business into our market um, because our local economy, our, our local business community is healthy. The other thing we got to get more, we've got to bring more people into the market. We we've got incredible challenges right everybody we talk to is having challenges right now and finding enough workforce finding enough labor to, to uh to fill jobs and generally what we're hearing i mean basically if if uh if you have a job in virginia beach it's probably paying more than it's ever paid before right now because it's just our, our market is so competitive finally i would say we uh the 493 startups is a great number for us. I think it's time we really need to double down in that space because, again, there's a with a with a nexus of 500 that we did last year. We probably got an opportunity to create some acceleration there that would be exciting. So, as we review opportunities that are presented to us over the next year to two years, is there some form of indexing company <coughs> the presentation to show us what the net cash flow or net inflow of of investment is? I hope so. So I'm, I'm having two conversations independently right now. One of them is with a uh, with an economist at uh, um, at Christopher Newport, who we think can help us get to that piece. But also, um, we're working. Uh, we've got a call in directly to uh, to Smart Asset. They actually have a local government consulting group, and so I don't know what that will cost us. But it, but. Uh, but yes, I think that's important for us to know going forward where it's coming from and what the real impact is going to be here locally. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Jones? Have you talked with, the, uh, with Doug Smith concerning the, the uh, offshore wind yes, sir. Uh, project? And because I talked to him the other day and he didn't seem to be aware of the fact that we have the only uh, deep sea port facility east of the Hampton Road Bridge Tunnel. So I'll, uh, Doug and I talk about twice a week on a number of things, and we, and actually we, we did a, his team and, uh, and members of my team uh, did, a, did a call specifically on offshore wind last Monday. Monday, uh, before we before we had a before we met with uh, with some, some of our partners in Richmond, and so uh, so I think that he is a. Uh, I'll follow up with him, but yes, sir, we're in communication there. Okay. Yeah. I think you know one of our biggest challenges is transportation. Everywhere I go throughout, they say, "Oh, for Hampton Roads," but you don't. How do you get there? So, so we agree. Um, we we're, we're very excited about. The, uh, the new tunnels that we're getting and the, and the general transportation improvements that we're seeing across the region. But, but that said, yes, um, one of the things that we hear about 
around around the country is is the lift. That would be industry term, but basically, it's uh, this is not the easiest place in America to fly into. Okay. Um, and also, uh, we hear uh, we hear about challenges, partic particularly heading uh, heading west and south out of Hampton Roads. But uh, but believe me, we're we, we feed those straight up to the regional level and to the folks at the PDC who have got who've got their finger on the pulse of that issue. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, request for approval of a resolution authorizing an award of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars part B policy for seventeen street properties. Mr. Smith. Madam Chair, board members, good morning. I am before you. 17th Street Properties LLC. But before I begin, I'd like to introduce Brian Moran, one of the principals with um, 17th Street Properties. So, um, before us now, the disclosure, I allow you all to meet those because I'm going to the project. <coughs> project summary this is a two phase project, the first phase being um, bring a new retail development to 17th Street, uh, approximately 20,000 square feet. And one of the things I will mention, we believe this is a complement to the west end of 17th Street with the sports center is going up. Additionally, I don't believe there's any additional redevelopment in the east end of 17th Street. That's why this is important for us in this space. The second phase is approximately 42,000 square feet, 4,000 square feet of commercial space with 38,000 square feet of residential. Uh, we are working with neighborhood preservation, um, city partner on this, as well as the housing community. So we can leverage what they have to offer, as well as bringing housing to that portion of the beach. You got one zero too much in there. Not sure, sir. Hold on. <laughs> Where are you at, sir? Phase one, six. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> six million. Six million. <laughs> Five hundred million. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it is sixteen million total. Significant. I had to look at that twenty times. I missed that. So thank you. Yeah. Um, these are the um, renderings of the development, if you will. And that is the second phase concept. This is our recommendation, if you will. Uh, we recommend $250,000. Uh, that's based on $16 million total investment. Yeah, that's a part B. I'll take any questions you have now. Questions? Motion? Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Who was the motion and second? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. We appreciate all new businesses coming here. I think it would be very successful. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, I'm staying from the vote. Okay, thank you. Okay, next one. We don't have much today, do we? Priorities. Commissioners. I just wanted to ask you, when you go out to businesses, just tell, thank them for coming here. I've been doing that recently, like to grocery stores, and they really appreciate it. And, and you might not think it means a lot to them, but if they go back, like, Legal and tell their corporate headquarters that we appreciate them. And I would appreciate if you would do that. We were supposed to introduce Colt, but he's not here today. Okay. Director's report. Uh, so, so I think I've probably talked enough today, but just uh, <laughs> would, uh, would wish everyone a happy new year. And, uh, <coughs> again, thank you all for the good work that you do. Okay, thank you. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. The chair will entertain a motion to recess into closed session pursuant to the exemptions from the open meetings allowed by 2.23711A Code of Virginia as amended for the following purposes. Prospective business or industry. Discussion concerning a prospective business or industry or the expansion of an existing business or industry where no previous announcement has been made of the business or industry's interest in locating or expanding the facilities in the community pursuant to Virginia Code 2.2-371111A3. Contracts. 
discussion of the award of a public contract involving the expenditure of public funds, including interviews of people, of bidders or offers, uh, a discussion of the terms or scope of such contract, where discussion in open session would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiating strategy of the public body pursuant to Virginia Code 2.23711A30. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. David Byrne? William Brown? Yeah. William Brunke? Yes. Azor? Taylor Franklin? Yes. Penny Morgan? Yes. Peter Mueller? Lisa Murphy? Yes. Mike Standing? Liz Drain? Yes. Dot Wood? Yes. <coughs> <Thank you. coughs>